Hey, how's it going guys? Um, in this video, there's going to be some graphic material, some scenes that are going to be a, a little bit of bloody. What it is, is someone hit a deer with their car and gave it to me. Now, I skinned the deer out and I kept the meat, most of it, and I brought the rest out here instead of throwing it in a dumpster for the coyotes to pick through and so they could eat some of it too. Now, uh, here's the thing. Sometimes steers get hit by cars and they lay on the side of the road and they die and the coyotes, coyotes and buzzards and birds of prey will eat off them. But sometimes you might be in the woods walking and find a spot where you see the coyotes have gotten a deer and it's just scattered all over and they've eaten it. Or the buzzards or raptor birds have come down eating some of it. But then there's a situation where you could be lost in the woods and you need food, you're getting hungry. Well, all of a sudden you hear the noise and you see that coyotes have just killed an animal. Now, if you see them on an animal, most likely it's a somewhat fresh kill. So grab a stick or two and only in a survival situation if it's an emergency and you don't have any other food. And you charge that pack of coyotes yelling and waving like a madman. And you can scare them off. You can, like uh, buzzards sometimes if you watch, like Tom Brown. Uh, Yule Gibbons, a bunch of the other ones talk about like you see a bird land on a rabbit or something If you charge a lot of times that bird's gonna drop that rabbit or them coyotes or fox You're gonna leave their kill and take off running and then you could harvest it So come on with me. We'll check it out and I'll show you something Um, And if stuff like this happens to bother you I would totally understand if you did not want to look and if you clicked off but if you want to see more feel free to subscribe like and share that way you know you'll be able to see more so you go through the bushes all right you hear the coyotes and you scare them off and this is what you come upon now you look over and there will be the meat and stuff now as you can see i left a lot of meat for the coyotes to get but that meat would still be good so you could grab that and you'd be able to cut those pieces off and eat it and the neck is still here. And uh, in one of the next videos, you'll see where I actually harvest it. Now, the good thing about this, if you look, the hide is still in great shape. So you can take this hide, it's not spoiled yet, and you'd want to chop it off here. Then you'd stretch that hide out, and you could scrape all that meat off. You want to scrape all this meat off of it so that it looks like this, but without that, without the fat, um, without the chunks of meat. And you could even eat that meat. And now what that does is you could try to tan it inside. They, there's an old saying. Every animal has enough brains to tan its own hide. Now if you watch the show Mountain Men and you see, uh, I forget his name, but the one guy there, one of the Mountain Men, he, uh, his hides that he tans go for a lot of money, but he brain tans them. And they say a brain tan is one of the best there are. And uh, later on, I might have a video where I show you how to do that. But also, look, you see all the snow on the ground? You lay on that snow, you're going to get wet and you're going to get cold. And if you're out overnight, no matter how good of a shelter you build and as warm as it is up top, the bottom is going to be cold. It's, you're going to get wet and cold throughout the night and you're going to uh, risk hypothermia, you have, even with a big fire going. So you'd want to take this hide and stretch it out in a bot on the ground and then build your shelter around it and what that does is it gives you some warmth it keeps you off the ground so that you have a greater chance to survive the night and survive till help comes or maybe you're gonna stay there an extended amount of time and uh, then you can add to your shelter build your debris hut up really good I'm a big fan of debris huts because uh, like Tom Brown said an old Indian that he learned from, him and his friends, they learned from a uh, Native American. He said, if you want to learn how to stay warm and about insulation, watch the squirrels. And what that means is, let's see if I can see any squirrel nests, guys. Um, well, there's a bunch of leaves up there. Uh, well, I can't see any squirrel nests right now. Oh, wait, yep, I see one. Hang on, let's go check this out. I know I'm going on, but, uh, and I'm sorry if I bore you, but this is very important to me. 
right there, if you look right there, is a squirrel nest. Now, when I say watch the squirrels, if you want to learn about insulation and keep them warm, they have, their nest is built out of a whole bunch of sticks, like a skeleton sticks, and they pack a bunch of leaves and stuff, and then more sticks and more leaves. Now, in the middle of winter, I have coated the bottom with a bunch of sticks and leaves so it was off the ground, and uh, then I took, I built the framework out of sticks, and I piled leaves on it, and then more sticks and more leaves, and that's what a debris hut is, a hot earth shelter made out of debris. Like, look right there, through this fence. You could even stumble upon this, right? Perfect. You take that framework, you pile a bunch of sticks over, and if you're here for a longer time, that'd be good because it'd be a bigger shelter. You could build a fire inside of it and everything. So every layer of leaves and sticks you put on it, it's gonna make it that much warmer. And you can be sleeping in your boxer shorts or in your clothes and be sweating it so warm inside there without a fire because your body heat will heat it up. And never ever sleep with your boots on, ever. That's a great way to get frostbite because your feet are going to sweat and especially if you build a good shelter, your feet are going to sweat a lot and then it's going to get cold and then you may get frostbite, which could be a very, very bad thing to have in a survival situation. The whole goal of a survival situation is to survive the situation, which means be prepared, don't panic and use your head and be safe. Don't take unnecessary risks because a risk is unnecessary. Now, if you see a pack of coyotes or bigger animals getting that game, that kill, and you try to charge them, they just growl at you or they don't run or they try to go at you, back away slowly and wait. When they're done, they'll leave. They're not going to eat the whole deer. And uh, then you'll still have the hide. You'll still have some of the meat. And if it's a fresh kill, then it's going to be good. But also look at the eyes of the animal. If they're foggy and glazed over, uh it's bad if you smell it i mean eh, not necessarily because it'll still be somewhat good but if you smell it and it smells really bad or if it's got like green in it or bluish green or metallic colors or if it's like really sticky and mushy don't chance it just take the hide cut it off and salvage what you can and move on uh take some of the guts or take some of this uh meat and you can set up a trap and you can catch another animal with that so a spoiled carcass is not always a waste. You can use some of that meat to attract other animals or even wait by. Possums and skunks are probably gonna come in next after the predators. It'll be the predators, it'll be the raptors, then it'll be the scavengers. And you can eat a skunk, you can eat a possum. And uh, I know there's a lot of disturbing stuff that I talked about in this video and I apologize, but I enjoy this stuff and I've been doing this my whole life and I am looking forward to sharing my lifestyle and what I do in my knowledge with as many as you as I can. So have a great day guys and uh, hop on Google, do some research, read some books. Uh, Tom Brown's Field Guide to Wilderness Survival is one of the best books you could read. It's got 100 edible plants, fire techniques, uh, fishing, hunting, all that stuff, tracking. And uh, catch you guys later. Get out there, have some fun.